What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Weekly Cheddar. Jake Shavink here with you guys as always. It is Friday night. We're doing a little after dark stuff going on. It's just some audio. Had a little something come up in the early evening, but uh, this timed up pretty well because Clayton and, and um, Emilio should be pretty much done uh, and wrapping up. So um, kind of hopefully time that well and give you guys some nice uh, Friday evening content. Um, with some live shows uh it looks like a lot of people are in here earlier uh move adam says move the draft up listen i understand that i get that like a lot of the fans everybody else for me i don't i want it to go slower i want to get as many videos out as possible over the next like four weeks or so but i i get that i get that for sure adam. i i get that sentiment tony says love your work jake well i appreciate that says what are your thoughts on tyrone tracy He's interesting. He is obviously dripping with athleticism, right? That was that was clear with all the testing. Converted wide receiver comes over to Purdue has a really strong year. I, I think he's he's probably being he's probably being the undervalued the most. I think at the running back position in the class right now, maybe Rashina Lee is like the other one, uh, but I do think he is getting overlooked a lot. Uh Adam says, can we talk about how, unco how uncool it'll be if the NFC North adds the top two quarterbacks in the draft? Yeah, that would not be very fun. There's no doubt. SCM40 says he'd be cool with it. I don't know. I I, I would prefer the Vikings to not get Drake May. Uh, I feel like Drake May going to Minnesota. Minnesota is for sure, um, for sure the the best quarterback situation of any of the spots right now uh and you're, you're entering a situation with two really nice tackles right hopefully Hawkinson coming back from injury right you have Jordan Addison who was excellent as a rookie and you have Justin Jefferson potentially the best wide receiver in the league I think he is some people would say Chase some people say Hill I, I do think that's the best situation for a rookie quarterback even if they're not playing right away even if it's McCarthy who sits behind Darnold for a little while like I prefer that not to happen I would rather them land Daniels or or McCarthy or Knicks or anything like that I, I do think though they're probably going to get something out of out of the quarterback they draft so uh Daniels at two seems like smoke I don't know I, I Adam I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure that out right like the Daniels at two thing because Brian Kelly either that was like the most obvious slip up like he meant to do it or he wasn't supposed to I don't know Brian Kelly saying throwing to, like for Washington or to Washington whatever he said ah, I don't know what to think of that I, to me like instant first instinct says Brian Kelly messed up and wasn't supposed to say that um because he has said some some silly stuff honestly um in his time as a head coach so we'll see We'll see. I, I don't know. Minnesota sending the farm for McCarthy. I think it's more likely when it comes to McCarthy that someone's going up to five or somebody's going up to eight, right? I don't think it's going to be this massive bit. I don't know if about the massive bidding war at four, right? At Arizona's pick for, for McCarthy. I don't know if Arizona's one of those teams kind of floating out the feelers like, oh my gosh, McCarthy's excellent. Come get him. Like th they could be one of those teams doing that. Um, but Daniels at two, I, I do think there is there is stuff to that. Hard to say though. We we can only guess. We can only guess. Mark Zambito, what's going on? Mo Bigsley says Trey Benson all day. Trey Benson is a souped up, big, tough runner, forces a lot of missed tackles. I think he gets himself into a lot of situations where he's forcing missed tackles, right? I think the vision and zone is is pretty below average to poor right now. However, I think he's really, really good at gap running schemes at the moment. And he's a big play threat with, with some pretty good hands uh, to catch the football. So like I, I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset if Green Bay adds him. Right. I, I do think there are better fits in, in zone running though. But if if it's if it's more inside zone, I maybe trust him even a little bit less. But it, it does seem like with the Jacobs signing that that Green Bay maybe maybe they're moving a little bit further away from the wide zone stuff and we might not see it as much. So um stm40 says need to know about the wall on your left on my left my left or your left um i don't think it needs paint it's all it's all like a light beige color um 
but uh, unless you're talking about the curtains over here, which are blacked out so I can film during the day. Um, Joseph, what's going on? Says Jaden Hicks, 40 time is awesome. Could be at pick 58. Him and Cole Bishop are solid. Yeah, I know, I know Joseph's been big on the Cole Bishop train. Um, yeah, Hicks is interesting. I think there's some inconsistencies there. Uh, may do his film. May do his film for the channel if you guys are interested in that. Also, let me know. Right in, in chat, you can also let me know. I don't know if, you know, clicking on videos and all that stuff, if, you know, doing less so. I know the prospect videos aren't as popular as, as some of the Packers ones, but if there's a prospect you like, I got a big lineup um, the rest of the way, but hopefully going to fit uh, a lot in over the next four weeks for you guys. So, but let me know what you want. Let me know what you want. Um, Smitty says soon. Yeah, it's, it's going to be here in no time. I truly like it's, it's for us. It's going to be here in no time. I know it depends. I guess once like, it depends for a lot of creators, right? Like guys like Brugler who, he gets his thing done. Like the beast is done in like, I think probably four or five days for him. Then he probably is like, all right, let the draft be here. Right. But for people who are like, all right, I want to do some prospect videos. I want to do like box and get all this content out. It's like, there's not even enough time. It feels like so. Um, but yeah, Smitty and us, Smitty and I will be doing a, uh, doing a, a mock draft, uh, the week of, um, uh, for a late night, little stream. It'll be a good time. And with P Pro Football Network's new simulator that you can multiplayer mock draft, that'll be fun. Minnesota has to compete with unhinged Sean Payton. Yeah, unhinged Sean Payton is a unhinged Sean Payton. Sean Payton might like literally have like owner syndrome where he's like, I'll sell the farm right now. I can just retire in two years if it doesn't work. Like that could easily be what, what he's thinking right now. Uh, Mitch says, I'm it's Daniels, Williams, McCarthy, May. Man, I it just seems like May. I don't know what May is getting dinged for this much because Dan, Jane Daniels on true dropbacks has a worse pressure to sack ratio, pressure to sack percentage than Fields did. Like it's it's much worse on true dropbacks. It's like 50, 60 percent on stuff that's not screens, right? Not all the quick stuff. Like Daniels is <clears throat> profile is very strange. He's on that last year like explosion as a as a prospect on the Kenny Pickett trail, right? There are plenty of guys who did that on their in their last year who are the big risers who <clears throat> don't pan out. Now of course the last big riser final year to pan out is of course freaking it's Joe Burrow from LSU. So you know it'll be it'll be interesting. <clears throat> Adam says it would be an epic fail for Washington to go from Ben Johnson and a May pair to Dan Quinn, Jane Daniels. Yeah. I do think Dan Quinn's got to think about like, what would I not like to defend? I want that player on my team. Like Jane Daniels will be not fun to defend because of how he runs. Um, he has to, he has to become more. Uh, he has to, he has to slide more. He has to be more cognizant of what's going on around him. Not take big hits, right? Like that's, that's the biggest thing with Daniels. And he's, he's very much a scramble to run, not buy time to throw player. But Mark says hopefully four to five QBs in the first round. Yeah, I, I hope so. I, I think it's going to be interesting. There's all this like late Knicks panic stuff, which I'm just not sure I buy. But it would be great if, if they were picked early. Um, especially if like Minnesota strikes out, they got to take someone. Maybe the Raiders. What, what if the Raiders move up and get Daniels, right? Then it's kind of like teams are scrambling for McCarthy. Then somebody's going to take Knicks or something like that. And it could get really interesting. I assume that's what, yeah, United Bates is SDN. Yeah, I was assuming it was this side. Uh, yeah, that's just the curtains. It's not the same color, so it looks funny. But it, the only reason they're there is so I can film during the day because the sunlight messes with a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, this bad habits, older prospect, skinnier player. Right. Like that's it's 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 a it's it's not a not the best profile to bet on. But, you know, the the league we're in right now compared to 10 years ago favors more. So someone like Daniels Daniels 10 years ago, I think a lot of people would have been out on and he wouldn't have gotten as as good of an opportunity. I, I hope I'm hopefully gets an opportunity. And, and is able to d deliver right where I'm not rooting against anybody. Um, 
but he does he does have to take care of himself a little bit more. Ethan, what's going on? Says, hey, Jake, how surprised would you be if the pack went interior defensive line in round one? I don't think I'd be that surprised, to be honest. I, I really don't. I think that them going defensive tackle early would uh, would be cool. I'd like Johnny Newton or Byron Murphy at, at 25. I'd be totally okay with that because I think it just depends. I know there was a report about Kenny Clark getting an extension. If that happens, if that's true, that probably takes them them out of that possibility. But it's still like, okay, we're betting on Carl Brooks, which I think the majority of us, if not all, like Carl Brooks. But he, he feels a little more rotational right now. Devontae Wyatt feels like a third down only player at the moment. Run defense is not good. So I don't see why not. Like you see a lot of of man, a lot of pro bowlers, right, and all pros at defensive tackle, their first round picks, a lot of them. And so you know, you got the top two guys here, maybe a Jenkins in round two, maybe a Dwayne Carter in round three, or or maybe Christian Boyd as well, right? Like those are those are guys I would 100% be in if I was Green Bay. I, I think defensive tackle is by no means set for 2025. I think there are still a lot of questions for sure. It's all good, SDM40. It's all good. Just want to make sure I knew what you were talking about there. Um, Adam says, speaking on the left, what's the third helmet pack fighting uh, green Bay fighting line. A. It's all it's North Dakota state, Adam. It's the bison. It's for the Watson selection, because after his rookie year, that was the guy who was the most hesitant about being a pick. Um, and so, you know, I, I want like my misses to be up here. However, I wasn't on Jordan love a lot as a prospect. I'm going to be adding a Utah state helmet to the mix over there, which will be fun. Um, that's fair. I think that's fair. Rookie, it's it's obviously I I don't I'm not sure any of us in our lifetime will ever see a quarterback class like 2020 ever again. Right there, it's just situationally there are going to be guys who struggle a lot. Like it could be one of the four quarterbacks being good, or it could even be one of the four quarterbacks being average, right, and the rest not working out. But that's why I feel like Minnesota, whoever they pick. Is just a really nice situation. I don't like New England's situation. I don't like Washington's that much. Chicago's is okay if they put more resources into their offensive line, right? Like they have to do that. Um, so yeah, I I, I get that. I, I get not worrying about that, but just seeing where Caleb and May were like back in Sept August, September, we were talking about them based on the 2022 seasons, right? They felt like a better tandem than 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 Stroud and Young. We'll see how that goes, right? There's a lot of talk about 2021 and the tools of all that class relative to 2020, and 2020's blowing that, you know, that group out of the water basically at this point. So Prince Capsison says, not sure what would be better five QBs go before 25 or four go, and we get a good move back offer from somebody who wants the fifth. That's a good question. I mean, five QBs going is is just another player potentially getting there. It just depends on the player. You might not like the extra player that gets there, right? Like that's but if, if they do move back and they get value and they're able to maneuver a lot on day two, or maybe they get somebody in the fourth round, they move up in the fourth round to get somebody else. Like having all that movement, I know people don't like trading back because they say we got too many picks. Remember, trading back from, from 25 to you know 33 or 34 doesn't mean they're going to stay and pick all those, right? At the, all those spots. It's going to be a lot of like, oh, you know, we can we can pick it, you know, we can pick a 34, we can pick a 41, we can move up from 58, we can move up from 88 and 91, or you can do a lot of maneuvering. So, Joseph, appreciate the super chat. Uh, if you have a question, you can always drop those in there as well. Uh, but much appreciated. I Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Pete says, Pete, how's it going? First of all, with multiple QBs and all the rest being taken to before 25, I don't know who the Packers would want to take. Maybe a Packers trade. Yeah, a trade down is very possible from twenty five. Uh, it does seem like that should be that should be a goody open for business spot, especially if a team wants a Knicks or Penix on that on that fifth year deal. I don't know. I don't know if you want them on the fifth year option. I think by the time the rookie deal is done, they're kind of going to know who they are, right? They're both they're twenty three and twenty four, closing in on twenty four, right? Like that's so we'll see. But uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's it's very possible to move down. Rumor Brock, how's it going? Says rumor about trading for Buda Baker using a day three pick. Thoughts? Wouldn't mind it. 
It's a lot of money. I think thirteen ish million. That's they they put a lot of money into safety. I think safety is important. Uh, I would have no problem with them doing that. I don't think. I think a lot of people are concerned about the top safeties in the class based on the athletic testing. I don't know if Kinchins is the best foil to McKinney. If Kinchins tackles better, they might be able to do that type of like post snap rotation where it's like you know you get. You get McKinney up top, he rotates down, and Kinchins is able to fly back into single high. Like that opportunity is awesome. Right? Like, I think, but if they want to go more traditional and get like Baker in there, or they 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 like maybe they like Blackman in there to play box, but if they if they go in the draft with Bishop or Oladapo or whoever, or Jaden Hicks, like I, I could see that. I'm interested to see if they want the true foil at safety to McKinney or they want like another McKinney versatile player can do all of these things, right? That that'll be, that'll be fun to see what they think. Um, Mitch says Washington will take Daniels in the first and Rattler in the third, make it groundhog day. I, I don't know why Washington wouldn't do this. Truthfully. Um, man, this the volume adjusting is super annoying on this sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to check what Washington's, I want to know how many draft picks they have. Oh, wow. Do they really have that many? Do they really? Oh, yeah, because they have two. Yeah. Because they have two twos as well, like Green Bay does. And they pick 67, 78, and 100. Yeah, they should 100% be taking a quarterback in the third round. I agree with this, Mitch. They should 100% be doing that. Don't assume, yeah, yeah. Don't ass- they should not be assuming. Is it five or is it six? I see six. Am I missing something on that? Because they got seventy eight Mitch from Seattle in the Howell trade. So like that's that's another spot where I would be doing that. Five top. On, I would I would like that. I would like that. I think they should. One hundred percent. There's no reason not to. Uh, Goody Joseph says Goody takes Darius Robinson or Kingsley Suamataia. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was going to bring this up later, but it's here somewhere. Um, no, no, you're good. They initially did. They initially did have top five top hundreds, but then they made the Howell trade, which is a very weird, weird trade under the radar. Not a lot of people talking about it as much. Like, so I, I get that. I gotta find this tweet. Here we go. I'm gonna share my. I'm gonna present. <laughs> just, just because, just because Joseph, uh, just because Joseph um, showed this, I, I want to bring this up because I tweeted this. Um, because he says he takes either at 25 and they lose their minds. I, I'm telling you. At, Sam tweeted this a, a few days ago. Said the Packers' first pick will be an old lineman who experts have graded as a third rounder at best. I know she also put like he'll end up starting all five spots over the course of a twelve year career. All five spots doesn't quite fit Kingsley, but Kingsley fits the bill of like old lineman. Oh, where's he graded? Definitely like on day two, but he's he's good anyway, right? Like that. I feel like that could that could be possible. Jordan Morgan would be another good shout. Jacob Wolf put that in the comments. Like that is, that's entirely entirely possible. I would not be surprised. He's a little bit bigger than their usual. He's at like three twenty six. He's a little bit bigger than they usually go, right at the at the uh, the position. And so, um, yeah, I I think that that is very possible. Uh, Adam says, speaking of interior defensive line for new scheme, seems likely Slayton will be back after this year. Seems like Green Bay is investigating a lot of gap shooting. Three techs. Yep. I think they're going to be more in the realm of can we get a three tech and have that guy also be a pretty strong run defender? Which, like, that there are some of those guys for sure. Um, I still think Newton can kind of do that. I, Jenkins, I believe in to do that. Christian Boyd, I think I believe in to do that. Dwayne Carter, Byron, Mur- Byron Murphy as well. Like, there are guys who can do this in this draft. Like, defensive tackle is not super deep but it's got some really impressive talent to the point where like i i don't see why not i don't see why they would do that why they would why they wouldn't consider detackle early 
honestly. Uh, Pete says Darius Robinson seems like a decent guy. Already had his own charity foundation. Yeah, if they view if they view Robinson as a defensive tackle, right? Because they met with Michael Hall, right, from Ohio State, and you know Hall's got a lot of you know impressive stuff as a three tech pass rusher type. Um, but Robinson could also be that potentially. I think the one thing with Robinson. And I kind of covered this a little bit um, when I did his uh, his scouting report for the channel. I kind of talked a little bit about it. Like he he gets out of his stance and he he kind of raises up a little too high sometimes, not all the time, right? There are times where he's got great pad level and and leverage heading into confrontation and contact, but there are some times where he kind of stands up. So I, I don't. That's the only concern on the edge, but he kind of cleaned it up in Mobile. He looked really really good there. Uh, that's obviously you know not. It, a replacement for all the film, but I, I wouldn't be mad about Darius Robinson playing defensive tackle if they got him on day two, for sure. Adam says, "Why is it harder to nail down a projected pick at for twenty five than at forty one and fifty eight? Yeah, I, I, you know, just because I think at twenty five you feel more like all right, there's going to be players who fall there that we maybe don't expect a couple couple players to fall there." Right. And so it's harder to project who's going to fall there. And that's like, all right, that's going to be the pick there. This is, but it's also like what at the top of the draft, based on where the consensus and all that stuff is at, it just feels like there aren't a ton of Green Bay types at certain positions. Um, so I think like, you know, you look at offensive line, like, will they draft Barton at 25? I think he's become, too, it's become too hot of a name, I think, at this point. And I'm like concerned a little bit about that where i'm like okay maybe maybe not um but like kingsley's a little bit bigger than they usually go same with guyton right like um fatanu like do they do they like his his height at the position like there's a lot of players that aren't quite in the measurables at tackle you know there's some corner ones where it's like oh where do they see the gene do they see him as a safety do they see him as a you know as as a corner it, it's harder because some of the top prospects have questions of like where you play them versus like w- would the Packers like this guy, certain thresholds, all that. Because Green Bay is very much more rigid in the first round than they are anywhere else. They're still rigid on day two and three usually. Or on day two, I mean. So I meant rounds two and three usually. But they're, they're pretty rigid in the first round. So it's like it's just harder to be like, all right, you know, can we thin the board in the first round? Okay, are all these guys going to be there? Are any guys going to be there? It's tougher. It's tougher to nail it down, I think, because there are a lot of day two guys where you go, yep, that's a Packer fit. That's a Packer fit. And, and you can you can plug them in because they're around that consensus spot. And it seems a lot easier. So I, I get that. It is it is harder to nail down down the pick. Um, SCM40 says, have you given us your take on Jerry and Jones top 30 visit? Yeah, if the Packers are following like the um, Larry, I'll get to yours really quick after this one. Uh, Jerry and Jones physical tough player in the slot like i don't think he should be playing outside he plays better in the slot but if green bay goes the route of like i know clayton mentioned it on his stream a couple times i know ryan's talked about it a little bit too and maybe jj has as well maybe everybody has where it's like they sign someone and then they draft that same position even after they sign it like if they're bringing nixon back as a slot or a returner right that obviously is like oh you know cooper Jean play some could play some slot and play returner right like oh sign plus draft Jerry Jones is also in the, the slot category of like, that's a really talented slot player. Like he's bigger enough. Like he is more along the lines of, of, of what they'd like. I'm going to grab Jerry Jones's RAS, put it on the screen. Like this is pretty good. 5'11", 7'8", 190. Like that, we'll, we'll take that for sure. And like the athletic stuff is really good. You know, he, he more fits the bill for sure. I, I like Jerry Jones a lot. I think he's, I think he's proven. I think he stayed more consistent in his games than 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 Renardo Green is. Obviously, it's a little easier to play in the slot sometimes than it is on the boundary, depending on who you're playing, of course. But that is that is definite. That's definite. Like like a maybe 88 if he gets there. Like if it's if it's signed plus draft. Yeah, very much in. Larry says Larry donate twenty. That's that means a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate that. That's that's a lot to donate on a Friday night for us just chilling here and talking some Packers and drafts. So I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, he says, hey, Jake, appreciate all your prospect reviews and other content. Thanks for your knowledge and insight. 
thank you. Um, I don't have all the knowledge. I'm not an expert. I don't think. Uh, I just try to pour in as much as I can into this and this, you know, gather from a lot of people who know more, and and that's kind of what you have to do in the space. Um, you know, it, it's it's that's humbling. I appreciate that. Uh, I I hopefully going to get a lot more prospect reviews out um, uh, before the draft starts. So you guys get a, a decent little comprehensive look at a lot of things, and hopefully. Um, at least more more safeties O line, uh, maybe a couple D tackles as well for you guys. Um, I know it's not going to be as fun maybe watching wide receiver prospect videos because Green Bay, you know, depending on who you talk to, they don't really need that. I I still think it'd be fun to add a, a player to the room, but you know, it's that that's much appreciated. I will say, um, just because Larry dropped this, and I, I'm just going to plug this really quickly, and I'm, we're going to keep going with all the other questions. Um. I, I want to bring this up. Patreon, I'm going to start one uh, just because, um, you know, there are some prospect reviews, prospect film rooms I'd like to do, but I cannot do uh, on, on YouTube if I want them to be monetized, of course. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, I'm going to throw a link. Uh, I'm going to create it tonight. Throw a link in the description of this video and probably the Adonai Mitchell one, too. Uh, where I'll be, you know, maybe we can break down Cooper to Gene over there in depth because I have all the clips ready. Like, I have all the clips from 22 and 23 set to go. Like, we can make a big film room for him. So we can do that there. We can do Kool-Aid there for those who are interested, right? Like, we can do a little bit more on, on that side of things than there. So, like, I know some people were talking a little bit about... Somebody was talking about... I think it was Jarrell might have been talking about this, where it's like, put the put up the membership thing up. It's like I'll probably will put the membership thing up, right? At some point. Um, for like secret streams and, and maybe mock draft streams where you guys can contribute and do all that stuff. Uh, but Patreon's gonna be like a nice place where we can go into some film rooms for some other guys. Maybe we get your Johnny Newton over there. Just saying, like if the Packers, I'm, I'll I'll be honest, Packers draft a big ten or SEC guy, uh probably not putting their film room up on the channel. <laughs> maybe I will still. Um, just to get like eyes on it, but we prefer to do it on Patreon. But Larry, I thank you, thank you so much for all that. I hope you enjoy the rest of the prospect videos and stuff. And um, yeah, I think we're gonna have something on Rashid Walker uh, on Sunday. So hope you guys enjoy that as well. But I, I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Dropping a, a a clean twenty bucks there. Um, Pete says many mocks. I know I got a lot to catch up. We'll we'll get there. Uh, Pete says many mocks are giving the Packers Peyton Wilson at 25 or 41. If they overlook injuries and age, I could see that. Uh, if they think he's like, if it's, if they think it's him and like, they're willing to just be like, you know, throw it out like injuries, age, we kind of need like a player like this. And they think he's miles ahead of everybody else. Sure. Would history tell us that they like Peyton Wilson that early? No. And Brian can speak to that. Brian's in here, of course, in the chat, chilling. Uh, saying that I'm a first round pick. Oh, that's that's very sweet, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Mark Zambia says I could see us move up from 41. That's possible. That's possible if they like if they like two guys in the late 20s, 30s. Yeah, they have a lot of they have a lot of capital maneuver around. <laughs> Adam says, Jake, can we please get at least one other projected first round offensive lineman outside of all to run a three cone? It would be nice, wouldn't it? Um. I think I think Fontana would run a pretty good three cone. I really like him. He might be tackle two in the class, honestly. The more I think about it, the more I think about it, he might be. Uh yeah, Brock, I saw this. I don't was this confirmed that the Packers were getting new uniforms? Because I saw that post. I was confused. Let me know if that's real. I don't know if it is. I don't know, Brock. I'm not sure. It was just a it was a weird post. It's a weird, weird post. I'm gonna move this closer to me so I can I can chill and see you guys a little bit better. Cody, what's going on? Says if they draft a Bartner oh, that was loud. A Bartner Fatanu, do you imagine they'd give those guys a shot at tackle first, right? I think Fatanu would. It looks like Brian agrees. I think Fatanu would get a chance at tackle because he's he's really good there. Uh, in terms of like positioning, flexibility, like he he does recovery skills, like he's really good out there at tackle. Barton, I feel like it was mentioned at the pro day a lot on Twitter and and when they were talking about the pro day, uh, some folks anyway, 
we're talking about like the league sees him at center, which I think is interesting because it's not, maybe they're not, they're not even going to guard. They're like, no, we get, we got to get him back to where he played. Uh, I think when he started at Duke, if I'm not mistaken, um, one of his first two years, he was, he was at center. So I, yeah, I, I agree with Brian's assessment here. I do think that's, that's what happens. Slayton can push the O-line back into QB. That's true. But I think you can find a couple of players who are going to be able to push the pocket even at 305 to 315. Yeah, it does seem like this, Cody. I, I doesn't seem like Fatanu will make it. And yeah, I agree. It does suck. I would love to see him there. Like if I'm the Jets at 10, I start having that conversation, truthfully. If I'm the Saints, I'm having that conversation 100%. Him or Fashanu, I would have that conversation for sure. It just seems like there's so much offensive line need right now. And just for teams to kind of pass on all this talent just seems crazy to me. So, Mark, I appreciate that. Yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. Of course, of course. Guys, we're going to do a mock here uh, to round out the night for sure. We can't leave a weekly cheddar right now without doing a mock. So we'll we'll get there for sure. Um, WM says Barton or Fatanu are fine. Yeah, I I I think Barton is fine. I, I'm. I guess I'm a little more excited about uh, Fontenu. Uh Pete says your thoughts on Packers Week One Brazil, and if so, will Week Two be a Sunday night or Monday night? That's that's a good point. I know it's the Brazil game is going to be a Friday night game, which that's still that's still a decent bit of travel. Um, I'd be fine with this Week Two being a Monday nighter. It's just they might not give them too much of a break because it's a Friday night game, if I remember correctly. So. Yeah, I think it, you know, it'll be, uh, it will be, it could still be a Sunday early because I don't think it's going to be that much of a, I don't know if they're going to give them that much of a break. I don't know if they're, listen, the NFL, there's a lot of player safety talk about things. I just don't know if the NFL is like clearly on board with player safety when it's out, stars are getting injured, then we got to worry about it. But like, I don't know, it could, it could happen. Um, Packers week one Brazil would be kind of cool though. Playing Philly, uh, set the tone early, beat the Eagles, right? Say, yeah, your downfall that's continuing. Um, and say, we're ascending, you're not. I think that'd be a lot of fun, honestly. Not sure I'd go, but I think that'd be fun. Cody says, if they trade up, what position do you think they'd be targeting? It's got to be tackler corner, right? It's got to be like, oh, that we really like Fashanu. Why is he falling? We'll take Fashanu, right? Or it's why is Terry and Arnold falling? We'll take him. Maybe they move up for DeGene. If it, because somebody asked this and we were going to do this on derailed, it was like, who would you move? Who do you think Green Bay moves up for if they have a chance to move up? I think it's, I think it's Fashanu. Obviously, Alt would, would certainly count, but I don't think it, I don't think he's getting past any sort of number. Um, I think Arnold and Mitchell are definitely guys that they would move up for. It might be just those three Fashanu. Arnold and Mitchell. I don't, to me, I don't think there's another one unless they really like Fuatanu, but I think Brian could attest to this. Like he doesn't quite fit all of their, their thresholds, which maybe they, they like him so much. It doesn't matter, but it does seem like it's just those three. So need a versatile lineman unless we draft two or three for depth. Yeah. It'd be nice to have a versatile lineman, a Bortolini who could play a, probably a lot in the interior, a Barton, a Dominic Pooney from Kansas, like it'd be nice to have one of those guys. Would I sign Makai Becton? I probably rather not, honestly. He is still 24, which is true. Maybe. I'd rather draft a guy, make sure we got a really good third uh tackle who might be even younger, right? I just don't he he's a bigger guy still. Even even when he trimmed away, he's still pretty big. I just don't know if Green Bay like still likes that type of player. He's still in like the Latham. I think measurables. No Patrick Paul measurables, three thirty plus at least. I, I I'm, I'm back and forth. I would probably lean. No, even though he's still young, but uh, we're going to get to super chats. My goodness. STM 40 dropping $20 says your content interaction is worth it. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Um, I hope you guys, I hope you guys are ready for April. I hope you guys are ready. Because the content for April is going to slap you. It's going to be like a slap in the face. Like, holy, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to be kind of disoriented. What we got cooking for April. So I'm excited about it. But I appreciate that a lot. That that means a lot. That you guys are are are, are dropping um, are, are dropping uh, 20 bucks uh, for this little stream on, on a Friday night. It means a lot. 
And Clayton, of course, man. Clayton, I appreciate you. That's awesome. Clayton says energy drink fun for the late nights. You're spending down breaking down these prospects. Appreciate you. And for those listening that that listen to Packernet, it's been a struggle. I'll be honest, uh, getting podcast episodes out, that all changes next week. Told you, April's going to be a big month. Don't sleep. I won't. <laughs> for Because this for the energy drink fund, as Clayton says right here, right? Uh, I have one sitting in the fridge. I have, well, I have, I have four sitting in the fridge right now. I'm not going to use all four tonight, right? That would be, that would be dangerous. Uh, but I'll probably use one because um, all, all I'm going to say is there's an offensive line prospect film room coming out tomorrow. I'm not telling you who it is, uh, but you're going to get one tomorrow for a Saturday upload, which is rare. Yeah, Clayton in the house. Yeah, what's up? STM40 and Larry saying hello. Dana, I just caught your comment. Um, said got a previous commitment, stopped in to give a like. That means a lot. Uh, and says go cards. You know, maybe we'll get the card. We'll get a little Cardinals mock draft for Dana on the channel, just because Dana's been uh, been so active and and it's been a lot of fun to jump in here as a Cardinals fan with a bunch of Packers fans chilling. So that's cool. Appreciate that a lot. Oh, Joe Hewlin's in here. Coach is in here, says Wilson and Quay in a 4 2 5. I'd be excited about Wilson at four playing the Mike Quay at the will. I like that a lot. I do. I think Wilson is is one of those guys in this class. Gosh, guys, I'm sorry. I keep adjusting the microphone. Wilson's like one of those guys who I think can play a lot of spots, which is, which is good. I, I don't think any spot at linebacker is going to overwhelm him at all. I do think there are a couple of will linebackers in this class where if you're like, hey, Hey, buddy, can you play the mic? <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? And they just kind of get overwhelmed out there. I don't think Wilson will be overwhelmed with the mic. I would like this a lot. I broke down Quay a little bit of his second year back in, I think, December-ish. And where it was like, man, he's just seeing things in coverage really well. That He's just he's popping into windows to make plays. He's not finishing as much as he should, right? To, to get like, He could have had like five picks last year. But like he he's seeing it and that's clicking in coverage, which is great news for him. But yeah, finding a mic to to play next to him would be massive for this defense. I know a lot of people were in on Bobby Wagner as being that guy, which totally understandable. Like if he was if Wagner's mostly flowing downhill and doing a lot of stuff there near the box in short spaces, like that would be excellent. But obviously I don't have that option. So yeah, Wilson. Yeah, I think. I think Colson would be fine. I think Gray would be fine there as well. So Mark Zambio says, we'd like to see Cooper at 41. Edron Cooper, I assume is what he means. Um, which, yeah, I think I think for for Edron Cooper, then you would, be, I think, be playing Quay at the mic, which I'm just not sure I'm thrilled about. Now, again, if, if, if the... Uh, the Packers think so, if Halfley thinks so, and they can get the best out of him. What do I know? But it seems like through two seasons, Quay Walker is a lot about is a lot the player that I saw at Georgia, a lot of the player I talked about uh on the draft stream the night he was picked, where it was like running and chasing, doing all these things, powerful, athletic, strong, like he can do all that. But when he's there's a reason he wasn't the mic at Georgia, there's a reason to Kobe Dean was a mic. He was getting everybody in position right he knew where to, he knew where the run fit was and it was kind of like okay Tyndall Quay Walker you guys kind of run and chase around in space so nostalgic says hello first off hi uh what's a wide receiver you can see I keep popping this microphone this is my bad what wide receiver can you see Green Bay drafting in the middle rounds who good question um middle rounds I mean if Jalen McMillan falls that far sign me up I don't think Javon Baker's going to fall that far from Central Florida, but if he does, sign me up. Two receivers who will be film rooms on the channel. Um, just letting you know, uh, those two will will have breakdowns. Um, maybe Tez Walker. Uh, I know Joseph's I, if Joseph's still in here. He would loves he loves when I say I mentioned Tez Walker, just because Tez Walker has has the speed element. I think Baker's got the route running and vertical threat element to his game as well as making impressive catches, right? Like, I think he can do a lot of things. McMillan's a nice slot option, but has some deep threat ability to him. He's more flexible slot Z, I think. Um, who else? 
I mean, if they want more height, weight, speed on the team, like Brendan Rice, if you just have him running in a lot of straight lines, like that works for me. Yeah, there's not a lot. It just depends because there's a lot of receivers in this class. It's just like how many are going to be end up being mid round picks. But I, I do like guys like that. I would love Ricky Pearsall in Green Bay. Don't get me wrong. My guy is my guy Pearsall is a zone hunter, understands where he needs to be when he's facing zone coverage. Tremendous route runner. Ton of urgency and burst in his routes. Like he does so much really well. And like I'd be thrilled with him. I think he's going a lot earlier. DJ has him high in his rankings. Usually that means he's going earlier than we think. So WM says we need D line early. I agree. I give me give me Newton or Murphy at 25. Or give me one of uh one of Jenkins, Dwayne Carter, who I seem to like more than consensus, which is fine, uh, from Duke. Or you give me Christian Boyd from Northern Iowa. Would love that. Cody says he thinks it was false. Yeah. Okay. It just seemed like a strange, strange, strange pick. Or a strange report, I mean, sorry. I'm trying to read chat and think at the same time. I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a lot of things. Coach says I can see us moving back from 41 and getting some extra swings between 50 and 100. Yeah, I it, it wouldn't none of the trading they do would shock me honestly. Even if it's moving up from 25, moving back from 25, moving up from, you know, 41 or 50, 8, moving back from that. Right, we watched we watched Goody last year trade down twice from 45 to 48 and 50, pick up some more day 3 swings, right? And like just kind of, yeah, we'll do that. That's no problem. Like we have our guy, nobody's going to pick him could easily happen again. There's no doubt. I, I would have no problem with that. Maybe we'll trade back in this mock draft. Um, Man, I had something prepared, and you guys are getting this thing going to an hour. I had something prepared that wasn't a mock draft, but maybe we'll get to it. Mitch says Jets are a mess. Yeah, they traded for Reddick today. Like That's a big contract to be trading for instead of just paying Bryce Huff, who is younger. I don't know. Strange stuff. Strange stuff going on in New York. I think they're taking a Dunes or Bowers. New York is. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Jets are going to do that. Right? Like, how, how much are you relying on Mike Williams, really, off of injury? I just, I feel like Rogers in their ear, like, hey, we got to get veteran tackles, right? We're going to get that covered. Let's go get Bowers or a Dunes. Bowers might fall to us. We can go up two picks. Rogers, Rogers helping the cause as GM for the Jets, saying, ha, Chicago, no, you're not getting it. I'm going to trade up in front of them, right? Rogers giving Green Bay uh, some some help would be awesome in that regard, honestly. Here's Joyce says he just finished the AD. Mitchell Vid says he's a logical pick for Green Bay at 25 for BPA. Yeah, Adonai, Adonai Mitchell's fascinating. Analytical profile speaking, not good. One of the worst in the class, truthfully. Um, but when you watch him play, he is he is open so much. He's open so much, so quickly, too. He's he really is. So are they gonna pick him? No. Is, is the one thing that Mitchell does do is he takes a lot of plays off when he knows he's not getting the ball. That stuff's not gonna fly. That's very Pickens esque. Funny, both went to Georgia. Um, but that's that's the really the question, and that's the thing, like. Teams are going to know this guy pretty well by the time the draft comes. Most of us are not going to know him, and that makes it tougher. Yeah, with Ramchek, yeah, Ramchek's hurt. They might need two. Yeah, Saints going tackle feels very, very, very obvious. So, very obvious. Erzra, I will get to that comment. I know you saw. I know you commented that you were excited that it was finally dropping. Um, we'll we'll definitely talk. We'll definitely talk in the comments of that video for sure. That'll be fun. Yeah, Clayton's in the house. Hopefully, I don't know if he still is. Right, we got a lot of comments to get through, but uh, yeah. Uh, Ethan asks, "What's a bigger need, in your opinion, off-ball linebacker or interior offensive line?" I would rather get interior offensive line short up than linebacker personally. Um, that's just that's just where I'm at. Like, I know, I know the defense has had problems, right? And and getting linebacker is huge for the defense, but like. Defense is defensive performance year to year is not super sticky, right? In terms of like, oh, you're an elite defense one year, you're an elite defense the year after. There are a few teams who can keep that up, but largely, if you're like, it's it's more volatile. So getting offensive lines into your offensive line set for Jordan Love, 
for big plays in the passing game to read Watson, Wicks, Dobbs, and, and the tight ends, and like having that type of protection up front for Love, and and maybe getting you know maybe they'll get more of a road grader type. Who knows, right? Who can who can push some people around and get Jacob some nice runs in between the tackles? Like, I, I think it's I think it's interior lines crucial, uh, especially because right teams are paying guards so much money now to have them on the cheap is is nice relative right now uh Airsway says don't like to gene now that D nixon was resigned needed resigned need an enforcer bullard all day in the second along with colson at linebacker or just got magaji to gene i think you need to believe he can play safety if you're picking him or corner right like i think he can be a really tremendous nickel player and a pretty good safety i have some questions at corner and maybe we can revisit that on a uh, Patreon, perhaps. Um, not to keep pushing that, but it's I'm excited for that. Um, but like you know, he he might just not be like Green Bay's type at corner, and they may not see. They may just think he's a nickel, and they don't don't value that very highly. But I do think he could potentially play like a bunch of spots. But Bullard Bullard is a really good like. Hey, this is teach tape of like zone responsibilities or just making correct reads and closing on the football and doing a lot of things. Well, like Bullard is that type of player and that's, that's exciting, right? He's not the flashiest, but he makes a lot of sound plays. Uh, Colson is another one of those types as well. And then Amagaji insane arm length, like all that good stuff. Like he is, he's impressive. Um, Airstrike says off ball green dot type linebacker over, into your offensive line. It's just a question of like, how good are the green dots in this draft class? I just think O line means so much to the offense that they have to have it. Um, WM says, if anyone can get back to back to a good level, it's Steno and Buckus. Yeah, it's them or it's it's Callahan who went from. I think he's in Tennessee now. I think Callahan could get a best the best out of him as well. So. He was simply getting injured old, not performing. Yeah, Campbell was a tough sell to keep, though. But I, I get what you're saying about they're going to get a linebacker. You think they're getting a linebacker before getting interior offensive line? Interesting. It's possible. Possible. Yeah, Peyton Wilson is WM. Peyton Wilson is 24. So. Smart and versatile, says Doug Pointer for Peyton Wilson. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I definitely agree on that um yeah this is the thing right it's it's deep and talented so that's like maybe where green bay wm could just kind of go like we're gonna keep swinging later like we always have and and maybe they'll connect again at the, at, at offensive line later i just would love to see them spend you know at one of their top three picks on o-line and pre preferably a versatile guy uh that would be really nice so Brock says, I know I'm a little behind. I'm gonna we're gonna catch up, I promise. Uh Brock says Keon Coleman at 41 would be run down the street worthy. That's the type of player they would need in the room. I'm not as big on Coleman uh as guys like Mitchell, but you know, Coleman and Green Bay, that's that's exactly the type. WM says Xavier worthy. Yeah, if you believe in like the gadget skill set and the speed, if you can get him more looks where he's not getting pressed, he uses his speed well in a, as a route runner, I think worthy does. Uh, but there are some some bad drops, and he's never going to play through contact pretty well. Um, it's a, it's a tough sell, but I, I wouldn't be mad if it was like a little bit later. Yeah, that's fair. SDM forty, that's fair. Potent, as he says, petrified Wilson is a one done one contract and done guy. Lots of mileage. He, it's true. It's true. Uh, Airstrike says Green Bay hasn't gone to line in the first and like forever. Most of the quality linebackers fall in the second round. It does seem like. The NFL is very traitsy with linebacker early in the draft, and then we find this solid play for a long time playmakers later. Uh, it just it just seems like that's how it's going to go. Like I, I really thought Leo Chanel would have been a really nice option for Green Bay on day two and twenty two, and they went with Walker Traitsy in round one. Like, I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong, but I do think Chanel's been a little bit better uh, through two seasons, and why and and Walker was picked. 22nd and i think chanel was picked like 96th 99th something like that joseph s says give me johnny wilson 6'6 six, six, with the 452 great blocking new lazard yeah he's got he's got pretty good foot speed joseph actually i, I that's a that's a good mid-round guy i knew i was forgetting somebody maybe he converts to tight end and becomes darren waller but at the same time 
pretty good foot speed, pretty good, pretty good play speed in terms of crossers and like working to stack defenders, wide, wide catch radius. Yeah. I, analytically speaking, he, he looks better uh, than Coleman film speaking. I'm not sure, uh, but I do like, I do like mi- mid round. Johnny Wilson be interesting. Cause he could, Oh, is he a tight end? Is he a receiver? And green Bay kind of plays that fun little game. Yeah. 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 Balaga is OT nut. Yeah. Well, they did think Balaga had shorter arms, but it worked out. Um, bu- 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 Brian, what's going on? Says uh, 1994 was the last interior line they took in the first. Yeah, that that makes me a little more hesitant on Barton, and he has become the the pick at 25. He's become the pick. I feel like he is he is moving up the consensus spots and like becoming the guy. And I know Boxer database doesn't quite say that. I don't think, but the more I see like mock drafts online on youtube and and podcasters talking about it and like mock drafts anywhere like it feels like he has become very popular uh clayton's a big fan of christian boyd we like that might clayton it might take 88 or 91 now i really think so he's had a really good process and two years of good play brian packers definitely do value tackle a lot more there's no doubt Barton seems the only viable tackle to target at 25. It just depends what you think of Guyton. It depends on what you think of Suamataya, Suamataya. Um yeah, it's 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 they're in a tough spot, but it it could be the situation of Green Bay saying, "Hey, you know, we're going to take this guy who thinks like a not top 50 player and actually he is." So Joseph would like the Packers to trade 25 for 42 and 59. That'd be a lot of fun swings. That'd be a lot of fun swings. Yeah, Doug, I think they're going to trade. I think I do think a trade up at some point seems very viable, very possible. Uh, just depends on what it is, right? Which is going to be super fun. But I, I do like, yeah, 11 picks is a lot. There's no doubt. Uh, but I wouldn't be mad having 11 swings um, with this team. Re- restock the linebacker, O-line cupboards, get a running back in there. Right, like that's you know maybe get a, maybe a receiver or tight end if you feel like you need one obviously corner and safety but like to be able to round out a lot of needs would be nice with all of those picks barton could definitely go before 20 that is possible if some team really likes him i mean seattle seattle moving down like six spots with like philly or something and getting barton makes a ton of sense right like that that feels very seattle uh wm says chargers going to grab bowers i think i don't know they could grab bowers I don't think the Chargers are grabbing a receiver. I don't. I don't think they're going to value it with Harbaugh and Greg Roman. It's the popular pick still right now. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I think it's Alt or you said Bowers, which makes sense. But I think even Fuaga or Fatanu in a trade down for the Chargers makes a lot of sense. It's O-line, I think. Ooh, Brian. Yeah. Brian and I answered some draft questions in a little secret member stream. We could get that going. Yeah, Brian. Message me. When you're free, we could do that. Um, P- Packers use some picks for extra 2025 picks for the hometown. That's, you know, taking a Wisconsin player in the hometown draft would be kind of sick. That'd be cool. Packers lead Packers lead in draft capital at their own, at their own draft. Yes, absolutely. That'd be fun, Joseph. Sam, how's it going? It's commented from X says Tyler Newman at 25. I don't think so anymore. I think it's I think it's out of the question. Uh, athletically speaking, I think that's why. I, I think otherwise, like maybe in round three, I still don't think in round three they're even going to consider it. it. Would have to be a day three pick for Newman, which stinks. Um, but it just seems like athleticism wise, compared to what they usually do and what has worked for them, it just feels like that's very out of the question at twenty five. He's a good ball player, though. There's no doubt he's a good ball player. Over under for oh, no way is it really WM is it really it's nine and a half for the first round wow 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 Alt Fashanu Fuaga Fuatanu Latham and Mims are six that I think are for sure yeah um after that Barton Guyton Powers Johnson and Morgan yeah I haven't heard a lot about Morgan which maybe to me signals that he might be a first round pick right um 
there's a lot of people are floating out. Someone floated out Powers Johnson's not a first round pick. NFL doesn't agree with media and whatnot. Could be smoke. Um, could be smoke. Could be true. Creed Humphrey dropped to the end of the second round. Center's just not super valued. Baltimore took Linderbaum at like 23 or 24 uh, a couple of years ago, uh, but they needed it bad. I don't, if, if it's Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh or Miami should be all over it uh, with Powers Johnson. But yeah, Guyton's, Guyton's kind of a wild card. Barton's kind of a wild card. But nine and a half is a big number. I would probably just lean the under just, just because I'd get nine. So I don't know. Throwing picks on the wall to see what six doesn't seem like a thoughtful way to use picks. Well, I mean, remember, it's it's a numbers game out here. More swings equals, you know, better chances. So, I don't know. I Trading up's fine. I don't think they need to make 11 picks, but I enjoy making 11 picks. There's no doubt. <clears throat> so... Uh, WMS has got a funny feeling the re-signing of Dylan means they aren't going to go running back early this year. Maybe wait to grab Travion Henderson next year. It's possible. I think Devin Neal next year from Kansas. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Nicholas Singleton from Penn State, I believe, is, is good to go. Quinchon Judkins, who's also at Ohio State. Uh, Taj Brooks went back from Texas Tech. Like, There's going to be a lot of guys in next year's class. I still think they're going to draft one or sign one as a UDFA. I just don't know when. It could be, hey, we really like Rashina Lee very late in the draft. We like Carson Steele, or we like uh, not Isaiah Davis, just another name. Thinking of, nope, it's not coming to me. Um, but like I know everybody's, some are interested in Brooks, some are interested in Benson, some are interested in Wright, some are interested in all of them. Just might not be the year. Just might not be the year. But I do think they add one to the room in some capacity. Honestly, I'm not mad if it's not early in this draft. Yeah, that's big. In 2018, Goody did that. Traded down from 14 to 27. Saints wanted to come up and get Marcus Davenport, then went back up nine spots to get Jair. Yep, with Seattle. For sure. I would love to secure for future first somehow trading down from 25, but I'm not sure. That's possible. I, interior line second, trade up from the third to get linebacker. Yep. That's that's not bad. Airs really feels confident. Goot will trade up somewhat early. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I, I could see it from 58 especially. They want to get into the top 50 for somebody. That makes a lot of sense. Brock, big Cooper BB guy, plug and play away at right guard. Yeah, he's played four spots on the O-line. I think the arm length is what a lot of people are concerned about. Maybe the athleticism was a little bit of a concern for teams, but then he uh, he um, tested really well, checked a lot of boxes for teams, which was really good to see for him. Um, yeah, Doug, I agree. That would be fun. No doubt. No doubt. I Yeah, that WM, that's fair. That's that's certainly true. He, he Bolton has been good to have in the room. Um because Bolton's a, a good Mike linebacker. Uh, but it was just interesting because like Chanel's profile of like athleticism and size and everything was checking so many boxes at, at linebacker and he went way later. Um, but that's fair. Yeah, context is always always important. There's no doubt. Well, <laughs> well, guess what? There is that guy. There is that guy, AD Mitchell. <laughs> Right, like he's right there. Uh, I probably have to take him at twenty-five, though. Um, speed six-two and four-four forty. What if? What if it's? Um, let me see what he is here. I don't think he's quite six-two, but but what about here? What about here? Is that good enough? That's the question. Is that good enough? Six one and a half, one ninety three, a four three six. He's not as built as his frame isn't as filled out as Watson, but a decent enough size, good speed, maybe possibility. Um, Coach Hewlin says, uh, "If we go wide receiver, I think Leggett, yeah, or Corley could give us something we don't have." 
Yeah, some really big yak threats are size speed. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good shout. That's a good shout for sure. Corley in that offense. Oh my goodness. Because I don't think I don't think Corley is like supremely developed as a receiver, but I do think he he uses his speed pretty well. He can gear down pretty quickly, right? Like he's got the running back stuff of like I can gear down, drop my weight, right, decelerate well and change direction and reaccelerate really quickly as a as a strong runner in space. And he runs over folks to the point of like, could you just put him in the backfield and give him carries? Yes. You absolutely could. And that's exciting. Like, I do think, I do think that, like, he could be the, he could be like a very versatile player to move around a formation. And, and that would be exciting. He's a, he's Jaden Reed. I know they're giving him a lot of the scheme touches and they're, they're working him in a lot of those, those facets. It'd be love, it would be awesome. I'd love to see them send Reed down the field more vertically. Um, but I get that they want to use him in that way. Corley would be a lot of fun to use that way. Leggett, Leggett, the one thing about Leggett that I like a lot is how good he is with extension as a version of separation. And what I mean by that is, right, when he's, you know, he, he's 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 a solid route runner. He's not, not the greatest in the in the class, but he's not bad at route running. But what really can 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 help is quarterback can go trust him to play outside of his frame and extend for the football away from contact at the catch point to where he can secure a lot of a, a lot of catches where there's not a lot of you know of of conflict for the football. So like his ability to extend away from the catch point, away from contact, like that really helps him. That would be a nice a nice thing to have. Again, Jordan Love isn't the most precise thrower. He can be. He flashes it a ton, uh, but to have like someone like Leggett or even even Johnny Wilson who can kind of just extend and make some plays away from uh, away from defenders would be really cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. Joseph is advocating for the triple Cooper draft: Cooper to Gene, Edron Cooper, Cooper BB. Oh, that would be awesome. Twenty five, forty one, fifty eight would be so so cool. I need this, Joseph. Uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to post tomorrow on this. Um, if any of you guys in chat want to send me your mock drafts, because I did the, I did a, a thing on this earlier this uh, this uh, off season where I said, Packers fans, send me a mock draft. I'll read them out. I'll analyze them. We'll talk about them on a video. I want to do that one more time. So if you want to put the triple Cooper draft in one of those, uh, just follow me at Jake NFL draft on Twitter. And just I'm going to I'm going to post that. I'm going to send a little tweet out tomorrow. Be like, send me your mock drafts if you want to be in a video. And, you know, you should send that one in. That'd be fun. So, Brian, are you in? Is is Guyton who you think it's going to be at 25? Because I think Guyton, to me, at 25 is very like, okay, we're playing for 2025 for Guyton. Because I think there's there's a lot to work on. But athletically, it's, you know, it's good. Yeah, yeah, I think it will be. Yeah, it'll be close. The, those, those last four guys, it'll be interesting to see how that that falls out, uh, that that fills in with with position. Because you look, WM at like the Niners, the Chiefs, the Ravens, they could tip the scales and make that ten very easily, or they they pivot because the top guys are off. It's tough. Devin, Neil, Brian, you and me both, you and me both, Brian. Uh, me too. I'm I'm super excited for this, Coach. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun draft. It's going to be a fun draft. Um, the McKin WM says McKinney signed to me smacks of a GM who thinks we're headed into a Super Bowl window. Oh, 100%. 100%. And yeah, Nicobe Dean was projected first linebacker. He went in the third. There were injury concerns. Obviously, he was a little bit smaller. He was like six foot, six foot, zero, six one, and like 228, 225. So that probably attributed to the drop as well a little bit, but it would definitely injuries were a part of that too. Save you look at 58. Could happen. Sure. <laughs> Not a lot of people are going to love that, but sure. I'm in. AD all day Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell and Watson would be something. It really would. It really would. There's no doubt. Uh, yeah, triple Cooper draft would be a great time. It would be a great time. Um, He did. Yeah, he was. He, the thing with Walker, 
And the reason he's being brought up is because he's probably a mid-round candidate at this point. It's where, like, he does not do well with contact. Truthfully, his his route break transitions are pretty... uh, They're not great. There's a lot of steps into the route break transition, but he's a really good long strider and deep threat. So if they want that in, like, round four, that's fine. But, yeah, he did drop a lot, and he didn't have a great answer for a lot of, like, press looks, which he didn't have a lot of at at North Carolina because they were, like, Teams when they played him were like, "We need you got to be eight yards off the ball, buddy. You have to. We can't let this guy beat us deep because he will." Um, he's he's very much kind of a a, a a Christian Watson in that he needs some refinement, but like his his trick is really good. Watson's got more frame to him though, but he's more of the mid round. I think Leggett, who you did bring up, is probably more of a late second. Than, than a mid round, but yeah, I would I would obviously rather have Leggett than Walker, but Walker seems to fit the bill of like I, someone asked it, I don't remember who somebody asked it earlier was like who do you like in the mid rounds? Yeah, he will. That's a good point. Watson will need one healthy season the next two, yeah, to get a second contract. Yeah, if 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 he if he continues to do, be on the track he's on, it'll be tough to to bring him back on. They might still bring him back, but it won't be the deal he could potentially get if he plays like fully the next two seasons. I think if he plays fully the next two seasons, I think, you know, I think Super Bowl is is very doable. So Brock's in with Triple Cooper. Um ooh, we're asking about over under Goody draft trades. Set the line at three and a half. Three and a half. That's a lot. But it isn't, I guess. How many do you have last year? Just two? There's two last year. He did two in 2018. He traded up for Love. Traded up for Amari Rogers. Did they move around in 2019? I feel like, yes, they did. They moved up to get Savage. 2022, they moved up to get Watson. They've tra- He's traded in every draft. There's no way he's not trading. Oh, Brian, how dare you? We already mentioned him. Brian, we already mentioned Javon Baker. You already know. He was like one of the first guys I asked. It was like when when they asked, oh, who uh, who would be a nice mid-round receiver? He was the first guy I think I said. So him and McMillan. I mentioned him. Check the check the check the tape, roll it back. Um everybody's getting in on this, the triple cooper draft. John Schmidt, how's it going? Says, what's the over under on how many 2025 picks Coot adds on draft day because no comp picks coming this year? Two and a half. Yeah, he may ask for like, hey, can you send send over that 2025, 2026, sixth or yeah or fifth? Like, yeah, I I, I could see that. Two and a half. I, I would say under, but I think that I think you'd be looking to add a two or so. Um, yes or a corner. Oh, for Green Bay, 25. Okay, yeah, yeah. Think to Gene or McKinstry, I think those are the only top options. I, I mean, there are others could be available, but I, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like I feel like Wiggins will not be the guy at 25. I feel like he is. I just I feel like he's not going to be the pick. I I really don't. Which stinks because I think it's just a play strength and size type of thing. But yeah, that's that's where I'm at. It's a it's a pretty short list. I think D tackle still would be on my list, Brian. But if if the I don't know if you're hearing it or not as well. If but if if the Clark extension is real, then it's probably out of the question. Frank Gore Jr. is a UDFA, maybe, maybe. Um, I think he showed out well at the Shrine Bowl, and I think he did enough to where like it, it'd be unlikely. To, I I think it'd be a little unlikely to see him as a UDFA, but he is just 5'7", 199, so maybe maybe he's a UDFA. I, I still think he probably gets picked on day three. Yeah, that's possible. They don't get project-type players the first couple rounds, but if they believe in the ceiling of a Guyton, of a Kingsley Suamataya, I don't I don't see how they wouldn't still consider that because like they've, they've still, even in a contending window, right? Like, they, I think... No matter what was was Rogers coming off the bad year and and you know, um, 
new GM, new head coach, all that stuff, like all that heading into 2019, I still think they were in a position where it was like, all right, contend. We're still contending. Rogers will be healthy. But also, let's take Rashawn Gary to be edge three and project him to be a starter in a couple of years. Like they're still gonna do that, I think. Right. I still think they're going to do that. But I get what you're saying here. Polish on day two, maybe the big upside swing on on day one. Oh, uh, this Joseph and Brock and, and WM who all, all are in on this. We need to get we need to get working on this. Green and gold mini coopers with uh their numbers, that would be sick. Um, trade back twice in the second and got read. They did four draft trades. Does seem a lot. Yeah, I think two makes. I think two makes sense. I do. I think two makes sense. Wicks and Brooks did come from trade down picks. This is true. Um, sorry, there's a dog barking. Um, Green Bay does. If Green Bay gets McMillan, would he come and play in the slot? Yes, I think he would, Adam. I do. I think him and him and. Because I think Wicks is, is outside. You're playing him on the outside. You're probably playing Watts on the outside. Dobbs is probably getting more outside looks. Then you have Reed and McMillan who can probably be flexible to do both. I, I like McMillan. I think he's he's very smooth. He's a very smooth playmaker. I hope so, Joseph. That's good. If 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 UW Madison figured out the hamstring issue, that's awesome. Can't wait to see him ball out. That's why we got the that's why we got the the North Dakota State Bison helmet back there. He's proven me wrong, and I hope he continues to do that. Um, because I I think it'd be a lot of fun to see him him put on some performances like he did with with Rogers, where it was just like, who can stop this man? Uh, when he's crossing, when he's running across the field, down the field, right? Yeah. Gold this year is a Super Bowl, P. Absolutely. Um. What free agencies after what free agents after the draft do you like for the Packers for starter or depth? Who's still out there? I know I think Clayton and company brought up Zach Cunningham at linebacker, which I think would be good good depth at, at linebacker. Um yeah, I don't know who else. Like I know I know there are safeties still sitting out there, like Julian Blackman. I, I think linebacker and safety is where I'd bring in guys for start for, for depth to potentially start right i think there are other um i think there are other positions i would stick to the draft but yeah safety and linebacker i still think there are some guys out there that could be added wiggins locked in really really no really i don't <laughs> adam wiggins in a basket of sandwich is still not heavy enough yeah i mean I, it's cool that it's great for him that he got up to 182 I'm not sure that's enough. Yeah. WM, I did not know Perry on Win. Oh, yeah. No, I remember Perry on Winfrey getting cut by the Browns. I didn't know he went to the Jets, though. It's interesting. They are obsessed with D-line. Well, they want to get after the quarterback and, and be aggressive. Right. And they, they traded for Reddick when they have McDonald waiting. Don't know what that's about. I, I truly do not understand that at all. Um. Might just be them saying McDonald uh, isn't going to pan out, which saddens me. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you too, Ares Joy. Right? Like, I just feel like Wiggins is not going to be it. I, I've seen a couple people give him in mocks, and I don't. I don't like to be the guy that's like, ah, oh, he's not. That's not it. He's not going to be that guy. Uh, at the pick, but like, I'm just sitting there, kind of like, nah, buddy, I don't think so. Um, did Mitch says did TJ Tampa have a pro day? The Big Twelve had their pro day. Like they had a Big Twelve Pro Day. I don't know if it lasted a couple days or not. Um, I know TJ Tampa did run. I thought the forty time was like decent, if I remember correctly. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I got here. Uh, from Brugler on this. Um. Four five two to four five five for Tampa in the forty. I don't know if he's got other times and agilities. I haven't seen them. That's what I've seen on Tampa so far. Um, yeah, but I don't know if it's. It could be, um, that they're doing the Big Twelve Pro Day over multiple days. But I'm not sure. 
Um, love Wiggins. Yeah, he won't be the pick. Would you take? Would you take John Smith? Would you take Latu at twenty five or Chop? Especially if the cornerbacks are gone, I would take Latu. I'm not sure I would take Chop. I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure Chop fits as well. He's. I know Brian's talked about this with Chop and the fit, like kind of being an arm length issue. Um, obviously, if you're just asking me, I still think I'm like sitting there. I'm like, oh man. Well, if I'm playing him at linebacker, maybe I consider playing Chop Robinson at linebacker. Um, and just getting him playing him off the ball on early downs and then letting him get after the quarterback on late downs. I still rather take Latu for sure. If the quarterbacks are gone, yeah. I Latu or or like Johnny Newton would be a tough call for me. It'll be a tough call. I'd pro, I might lean Newton just because I think there's more if Wooden kicks out there and plays some defensive end, I think there's more to uh to fill at defensive tackle, but I just think Green Bay think okay. Air Joy says I think they meaning Green Bay saw the Lions route of getting ready to go polish guys. How it worked out it might go similar. They might. I think they're gonna like I said. I think they're gonna do that on day two more so than they will the first. Right. I still think Goody in the first round still sitting there is kind of like okay, like either it's starter now with quality ceiling or like insane ceiling that we're taking. Period. Just because I think that's what he that's what he's looking for. He's looking for big time home runs. Saying the Jets did cut him. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yes. Cooper BB, big dude. Mini Cooper would be tight. Yeah. They need like a, you know, O line mode in the Mini Cooper. But I, I think that would be hilarious. We need to get on that. Yeah. We kind of need a safety, really, because we only got McKinney and Johnson Jr. Yeah. They might just be buying their time, seeing how the draft goes, and then like, ah, oh, Julian Blackman's out there. Justin Simmons is out there. You guys want to come in on a, on a, incentive laden like deal then they might do that that feels like more likely or not Brock asked still doing a mock draft tonight um yeah yeah I think we're gonna still do the mock we'll get on there quick in a few minutes um I do want to ask the chat a few questions though because I I once once we get there I'll get to these last few comments I've got a couple questions for you guys because I want you to answer them I think it'll be fun um <laughs> Benny Sapp would like a word um, that's funny uh often more vets come on free agency market post draft yeah i think it's it's definitely joseph i agree it's going to be a very wait and see look they're like ah we need a linebacker zach cunningham come on down or it's like we need a safety you come on down. like they'll, they'll probably do that now so their edge rushers is kind of like a committee and they really go over 60 snaps yeah that's bryce huff got a lot of run because he was fresh right and, and could continue to get after qb because they weren't playing him as much on on early downs or if they did they were just every other drive or whatnot like that seems like it was yeah yeah for sure brian's of course joking about wiggins uh wm says you think newbin or kinchins fall to the fourth maybe i don't think newbin will i think some team will take a chance even if it's still a third round but kinchins might kinchins might because i think people look at the 40 Right, and I'm not saying this is correct. It could be correct, but it also could it. People look at the 40 with Kinchins and go, "Well, aren't you a single high safety? Like, aren't you supposed to play back there?" And the, and they like get it in their heads of like, "Oh, he can't play. He can't possibly play back there. He he just run the 40 fast enough." And it's like, "Oh gosh, why why are you saying that?" And so like teams might play themselves a little bit with Kinchins, and it's like, "He can play back there. He just needs to ta- he needs to tackle better. Kinchins does. He must tackle better um, if he wants to hang." But I can't just in the fourth would be insanely nice. Give me that. Three days. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Co- I'm in too, coach. I'm in. He is just, he's polished. He's an artist. We covered him on the channel here. We we did a video on him on Sunday. Um, just love the player. Love, love that he throws, um, throws out as many moves and counters that, that possible. Just, just, uh, just to keep it going. He's just relentless, relentless player as well. Chris dropping two dollars says mock draft time. Okay. Chris, can I ask can I ask two questions? A couple questions first before we get there. Just for you, just for chat, just for you guys to think about. Okay. Uh Beth says thoughts on Miles. Miles Murphy from UNC D tackle. Let me know. Let me know who, who Miles is. 
All right, really quick, I want to play this with you guys. Um, just very fast. We're going to play Pretty Penny or Bargain by Draft Edition. Um, so I want you guys to answer a couple questions. Oh, is Miles My- Cole? Chris is like pushing this mock draft. We're going to get there. I just want to do this for like two minutes, Chris. And then we're going straight there. But if it's Miles Cole, let me know. So we're going to do this. Pretty Penny or Bargain by Draft Edition. Okay. I want you guys to tell me who you would like more. Okay. All right. This is the first one. Would you guys rather have Terry and Arnold via a trade up in round one or Renardo Green from Florida State in round three? This is what I want to know. I want to know what you guys think of this. Would you rather have Terry and Arnold in the, via a trade up in round one or Renardo Green in round three? Let me know. Let me know. Get a few, a few. Uh, I'm glad Adam's digging the exercise here. Good, good to, good to hear. Good to hear. Wow, look at all of this, Renardo Green. Three Renardo Greens right off the bat, and then WM says, "Give me the blue chipper." And Doug and Mitch say Arnold as well. Wow, look at that. Look at the split there. Look at the split. I think it's a tough question. I I think I'd rather have Arnold just because there's a lot of draft capital and would, he's got flexibility to play inside and out. Mike Berry saying Arnold. Mike, how's it going? Elliot Beans commented saying Arnold. Folks, you know, drop some comments in the chat. But I appreciate you guys who are who are dropping comments now, um, uh, and and viewing. So that's awesome. It's a tough question. Brock says depends on how far the trade up has to be. Cost of trade up. Um, let me see. Let's say it's a. Let's say it's a move up to. I gotta. I'm gonna pull up the. Tra- I know the draft trade value chart isn't the best because it's it's always fluctuating. But I want to see. I want to see. Pete's Pete's leaning Renardo Green as well. I'm just gonna pull up the trade chart just so I can see it. Um. Okay. So. 150 to move up there. Okay, let's say if it's let's say it's to let's say it's to the um let's say it's to 19 to get Terry and Arnold. Okay. Um it's a if it's nine if it's to move up to 19, it's probably gonna cost pick pick 88. If it's 25 to 19, it costs 88 to move up. What do we think about that? Coach says he wants Green to keep the capital. Yeah, it's not it's not that much. It could cost the second Mitch depending on how far we go. But what if it was to 19 and it costs 88? What do we think about that? Okay, WM says he'd do that for 88. Arnold for it. Yeah. Arnold for 88. Arnold give up 88. Okay. How about I didn't mean to not for a two. Okay, so people are going to draw the line here basically. It would seem where if the trade up is to let's say let's just for the exercise uh 16 right if it was to 16 with seattle who would probably like to trade down and acquire more capital it would probably cost 58 but i assume people would be not in on that um i assume people not be in on giving up 58 to move up to 16 for seattle's pick which is honestly potentially what it might cost. So let me check Renardo Green's. The one thing about Renardo Green, folks. Okay, yeah, don't give up one of the seconds. Arnold still are okay. Coach Hula says is Green a slot corner key play. He played on the perimeter. However, maybe this was a bad exercise in the fact that he's 186, but he played really well in press. Uh, on the outside, he played well. He was he played out there. He he played out there. So yeah, okay. So so people be. It seems like people be okay saying Arnold if the trade up wasn't a big one that costs a second. But if it costs a second, no dice. Okay, I like that. I like that. Okay, gotcha, guys. All right. 
But yeah, I think maybe some people coach might view him as a slot corner, but I, he's played in the perimeter. He did well against Malik Neighbors in their matchup. So 25 in Max Meltner Arnold. Well, that's funny. Funny you guys say that. Here's another really quick for corner. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry round one or Max Melton round three? Kool-Aid McKinstry round one or Max Melton round three? What do we think on that one? Um, Pete says no deal for up. Okay. Uh, so Kool-Aid, right? Traditional. I think he's got enough skills to play press man. I think, uh, I think he is a boundary guy for sure. Max Melton, a little bit of a question mark. He might be more slot than, than perimeter corner might be able to do both. Um, I think both have a little bit more of struggles in terms of like catch up speed. Uh, but I do think there are more reps where Kool-Aid just makes it look really, really clean. So, okay. And coach says he likes picking an 80. I agree. I like picking an 88, 91. There's some, there can be some quality players. I think who can fill important roles at 88, 91. Prince Capson says Kool-Aid, but everybody else says Melton. Wow. And Melton is rising. He might, he might be, he might be a second round pick. It's possible. I still contend they might take him at a 58. Which, you know, just depends. So a lot more Melton than Kool-Aid. Seems like everybody's pretty cooling on Kool-Aid. Melton two. Need the bow max need the bow and max combo. Really nervous. Max Melton won't make round three. Well, that's okay. This is we're pinning him as round three. Right. We can do this exercise another time where he's round two. Um, but Deron Bland was a fourth round. He might have even been later than fourth. Let me see. I'm interested to know now. Um, McKinstry, not not enough of an upgrade over Valentine for me. Melton, Doug says Kool-Aid. Miss says he really likes DJ James. I will say DJ James, impressive film. I had I were a lot of times where I was looking at James playing. I'm like, man, just... I saw him play once against one of the receivers I was studying, and then I'm like, all right, any SEC receiver, I got to see him against against Auburn because I want to see how how he plays. Yeah, so Jerron Bland was a fifth round pick, one sixty seven overall. I thought he was a fifth. That sounded more right. Um, Kool Aid Green for Renardo over. Okay. Valentine did take a lot of snaps. I just think if there's an upgrade, I think you take it personally. Jerry and Jones for round three, four for slot. Yep. Yep. I just stuck to more like guys are going to probably play on the perimeter, but Cooper to Gene in the slot in the round one or Jerry and Jones in the slot round three would be an interesting conversation too. But yeah, DJ James a little bit short. I think he's he's 5'11, though, I think. But he's like 173 pounds. That's the big thing. Um I don't know what Bland's RAS was. Elijah Jones in the fifth. Maybe. Yeah, he might be a fourth, though. His athleticism, his athletic testing was good. Brock likes St. still is a slot. Okay. Um, well, um, let's do one more for you guys. I, I got to do this one. Let's do this one for fun. We got to do an O-line one. Airstrike says he's taking McKinstry in the second, just not the first. It's understandable. All right. Let's do this one. Okay. All right, so Kingsley Suamataya at 41, or Kieran Amagaji at 58, or Christian Jones, who I spelled incorrectly, darn it, uh, from Texas. Gosh, darn it. Nice spelling. Or Christian Jones from Texas in the fourth. So Suamataya at 41, Amagaji at 58, or Christian Jones in the fourth. What do we like there? What do we like there? Let those let you think about that. Um, the answers didn't come in as fast. I think there was some there was some uh, some debating in everyone's minds with this one. Okay, Elliot says Kingsley. Brock says Amagaji. Doug says Amagaji. 
John says Amagaji as well. Depends on the board of 41. That's fair. But you don't have that information, unfortunately. Um, wow, lots of Amagaji. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Joseph says Amagaji only because I like linebacker corner at 41. See, there's a lot that goes into this, right? All three, please. Pete, love that. I love that. Adam, I don't think you can have Blake Fisher in the fourth. You can have him in the third, though. Blake Fisher would be an interesting one to add to this one and say him in the third via a trade-up. So you have to trade up for... That's interesting. Kingsley at 41. Kieran at 58. Blake Fisher via trade-up in the third or uh, Christian Jones in the fourth. So, But, okay, Adam says Kingsley. We did pretty well with the fourth-round tackle a couple of years ago. Yeah, this is true. Christian Jones did really well at the Senior Bowl. There's some warts on film a little bit um, that I didn't love, but continues to, you know, he had a good process, and that's that's always nice to have that kind of momentum. Javon Foster in the fifth. It's not a bad shot either. It's not bad. Okay, one more, guys, and then we'll do the mock, okay? This one's also got three names, so I'm interested to see what you guys think on this. Okay, last one. Cole Bit no Brock says Jalen Sundell in the fifth. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Cole Bishop round three. Malik Mustafa round four. Or uh Kihan Oladapo round five. Round five. So Coach Hewlett says Jones in the fourth. We have Walker. I yeah, but you never know. You know, I hope Walker becomes a franchise left tackle. I do. I think his second half of the year would indicate that. Still a little bit of a smaller sample size. Um but, but I get that. I would just like to have a really quality third tackle because you just never know when you're going to need them. Uh, and with offensive line play being so so poor around the league, it's just be nice to be loaded there, truthfully. All right, so here's the, here's the thing again so you can see it. Um, Cole Bishop round three, Mustafa round four, Oladapo round five. Adam says Oladapo. Schmidt John says Bishop and Oladapo. Nice. Uh, we got a Mustafa. We got a Bishop. Oladapo. Bishop. Oladapo. 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 Keaton getting dubs here. We love that for him. So Mustafa was the only one who got one vote, huh? Bishop got a couple. SDN says Oladapo. WM says not Bishop. Okay. Can count that for Mustafa as well. Yeah, coach. I I just think I just think having three tackles who you know can play at any point, huge deal. Be nice to have an interior guy who could kick out there in a pinch as well. So, Pete says I stand pat with all three. <laughs> okay, but he puts Malik Mustafa. Okay, yeah, Mustafa plays fast and he plays fierce football, which is fun. There's no doubt. That was a fun little exercise, and you know what? We're gonna bring it back next week because I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more in the uh, waiting for you guys. We'll do that again next week. All right. we got, I got seven more in there. Maybe I'll add some more in for next week. Um, And yeah, but as Chris N said, as of 15 minutes ago, whoops, Chris still appreciate this uh, a lot. Uh, says mock draft time. And that, that's what's going to be. Uh, mock draft time wm says you know greg joseph leads the league and missed kicks the past three years i did not know that but again if he if he's a free agent there's a reason he's a free agent right really good signing that you never know sometimes change of scenery with kickers works it, it can work not always but it can glad you enjoyed this doug i've got I get, like i said i got seven more in there we'll do some of these next week as well i i enjoy these um can't take credit but Ben Solak used to do that at the Draft Network. He would always do those kind of articles, and uh, those were always fun to read. So had to bring that uh, in. Mustafa gives Tariq from Carpenter vibes, both from uh, Wake Forest. Wasn't Carpenter from Miami? Wasn't Carpenter from Miami? Could be, could be wrong there, but I thought he was. Yeah. WM, maybe we're, maybe we're going to pick one up. In the draft or undrafted free agency, we'll see. He also says Roger Rodengard on day three for O line. Yeah, he might be a round three, Joseph, not a day three anymore. But here we go. We're gonna get to the mock here just because we gotta get we gotta get it rolling. All right. 
Let's get it rolling. Seven rounds. I don't think I'm going to trade. We're going to try to make some quick picks and uh, we'll be out of here. Um, uh, Adam, I'm not putting that on the screen. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, yeah, Carpenter might have fit better as the, maybe they still, you know, maybe he would have fit better as a box safety in this scheme that we're about to start. So, but yes, Adam, yes. TDN, that wild article. I, I paid on Substack to read that from Arif Hassan, and that was a wild article. All right, let's start the draft. <laughs> let's get rolling here. Uh, we had three quarterbacks go off pretty early. McCarthy went 12th, it looks like, to the uh, – the or no, he went 11th to Minnesota. Okay. Fatanu going 14th. That's not shocking. Arnold and Mitchell come off before pick 19. Latu comes off. Barton is off. Murphy's off. Adonai Mitchell goes uh, at 24. Uh, oh, yeah. You Sorry about that. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. Um, really quick. I want to get to this because you mentioned it. I apologize. Yeah. Miles Cole. Miles Cole is a ton of length, a ton of athleticism, right, from Texas Tech. Just didn't use his length really well at the in Mobile for the one-on-ones, but like that type of athleticism and size, he's like 6'6", 278, I think. Sorry I didn't answer this question. That's my bad. Uh, but yes, he can be probably had pretty late on day three. And I, I would not be I would not be mad at that. Um okay. Oh yeah, Sundell Sundell, I think is who you're I assume who you're talking about about coach pretty sure that's who you're mentioning pretty sure you're mentioning this this cat sundell he's i i like him i like him so yeah brooks was brooks was very productive yes he was productive uh cole hasn't been as productive but okay so there's a lot of prospects here on the board i mean two top 10 players newton jajean mims mckinstry and they've got powers johnson still available this is a this is an embarrassment of riches here. Um oh, guys, I got to do it to him, I think. <laughs> Last week we took Cooper to Gene. This week I got to take my guy here, I think. Yeah, John Schmidt's on it. We're going to take we're going to take Jerzon, I think Johnny Newton here over to Gene just cuz I think I think there's there's stuff I like still at corner that I'm interested in seeing how it plays out. Uh I would I would like Kool-Aid. Um can Mims move well enough? Yeah, he can. He can. Uh Joseph says if that happened, Goody would trade down. Probably. I would like to trade down, but I'm taking I'm taking Johnny Newton here. I just think there's there's so much to like. I think he's improving as a run defender. I think PFF would agree. Like he is, he's a dominant three tech pass rushing type who I, I really, really like in this scheme, especially if Kenny Clark is not uh, going to return after the season. We're going to go Jerzon Newton. I know Chris N puts in there JPJ. Um, I know coach says DeGene or trade back for McKinstry. Definitely would have liked to do that. We keep losing my boy TJ Tampa. Can't never pick him at 41 anymore. It's very unfortunate. Uh, but we're going to go Newton. Uh, Jenkins are sweating the second or third. Yeah. We're going to go. We're going to go Newton. We'll see how this, how this kind of uh, plays out the rest of the way here. Oh, we're going to be kind of put into a, uh, a tough. Yeah. He is, he is a dog. He really is. I, and a very good pick. Yeah. A lot of, lot of upside with him. Huh, folks. I think we got to do it. No, not saying Goody and company would do this, but as of right now, based on what's on the board, I'm not sure Sainer still is going to be going to have enough in terms of size for them. I would not mind Zach Frazier here at all, but I do think coach says Kenny one tech. Um, Oh man, I don't know if I'd trust him at one tech as much. I trust him more at one tech than I would Wyatt or Brooks, though. Yeah, that's it's tough. I feel like Murphy's probably a little bit better suited for that coach than 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 Newton is. But I do think it's it's possible. Um 
but he is just he's just so darn good at three tech. It's hard to move him off that. But linebacker time, drafting Bible, good Lord will be made some athletic three hundred. We do it's true. It's true. But I have is Clark gonna stay long term? Is Wyatt good enough to play all three downs? Love him on third down. Is Brooks going to be that dude? It's a day three pick. Can he be that dude? Absolutely. I just, I think defensive line, if if the Clark extension does not happen, becomes important pretty quickly. But very possible it's not the pick there. I think I think Kool Aid could be the favorite in the clubhouse uh, from Goody's perspective there. Board did thin pretty quickly here. Rake straws a possibility. Um, I'm gonna go Peyton Wilson here. I know Green Bay might not. 24 injuries might be a one contract player. I just don't know where else I'd go here. Maybe Frazier. I I just I coach, I like your plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. Yeah, Tampa with 41 plus, that'd probably be good. Isaac or Nealon too high. I think so. I think so. I'm gonna go Peyton Wilson. I know Doug says Frazier. I don't mind that at all. Uh, but I'm gonna get the linebacker here. I'm gonna I'm gonna make that pick. It's a tough one to make. Oh, but guys, I think it oh, oh it's beautiful. Yes. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh, we went we went for it. We went for it. Doug asked how sane or still is from you. I mean, he's a really good player. He's a dog at, at slot. I just don't know if Goody and company are going to be thrilled with the size there. Uh they brought back I think if they're going to get a slot. I think it's going to be even if it's early. I think it's going to be DeGene that they're going to stick there or they're going to let Jerry and Jones do it. So um let's see. Slate, if Slayton or Ford not Slayton Ford are not good fits, says Prince. We're not, DL might be more important. Yeah, it's very possible it is. Um, yeah, he is a little small, but is Wilson good, Adam? I think so. <clears throat> I think he is. Yeah, trade Stokes in next year's first first or tan. That'd be sick. That'd be kind of sick. Okay, here it gets a little tougher. Sainer still still here, of course. I I don't I like Brooks. I think he's RB one. I'm not going to take running back this high. Personally, oh, there's just so there's so much talent here. It's hard not to take Amagaji consistently <laughs> over and over at this pick. A Neeland would be super fun, but I think if you're taking if you're taking um, Newton early, Newton and Neeland defensive tackle and defensive end, both in the first three picks is a lot. So for me, I could be talked into Hicks, uh, but I think for me. Yeah, Neeland would be Neeland is is hundred percent a fit, a hundred percent he's a fit. Really like what he brings to the table. Uh, ton of power, ton of length, ton of potential. I just think for me, I gotta go Haynes here, or I gotta go with with Amagaji. I just think there's too much. Let's let's wait at tackle. I know Green Bay doesn't do this folks i know they don't i know they like tackle experience for their interior players but i'm gonna go christian haynes here because i just really like haynes i've taken amagaji in so many so many mocks to this point i'm gonna switch it up a little bit i'm with i'm with you elliot i'm with a lot like o-line's important um i'm gonna go get i'm gonna go get haynes i think he's awesome truly i think he's awesome he looked a lot more comfortable and mobile settling in, right? Shooting his hands a little bit earlier in some of the past pro one-on-ones. So I'm going to go Haynes just for my mock. Let's go Haynes for fun. I, I think Goody and company would rather have Amagaji there. Uh, John Schmidt asked, can Amagaji play guard? He he can. He did in his first season. Um, so the Ducks says, how many Ivy League linemen in the league? That's fair. Uh, but how many Ivy League linemen look like Amagaji? Like he is. Oh, I forget what he is. His exact measurements. I think I have them somewhere here. 
Amakaji. Let me find him because I did his video. So I know it's here somewhere. Okay. Amagaji 6'5 and 3 ace, 323 with 36 and an eighth inch arms. Insane. Insane. Um, okay. So yeah, he can play guard. Uh Jerry and Jones official visit. Yes. Yeah. I, I think Nealon being a fit is a is a good deal. Cam Kitchens and oh yeah, they're both here, aren't they? They're both here, aren't they? Everybody wants to have a little bit of fun. We want to. We got some Melton thoughts in here. We got some Malachi Corley and Beth Corley to have some fun. You guys want to have some fun? You guys want to have a good time? You want to have a good time, Malachi Corley? Pretend he's like a pseudo running back. We'll take a look at corner before we before we get. But we have two picks here, so yeah. Um, Jerian makes sense, but I really want a perimeter guy. Brownlee, I kind of like. All right, I'm gonna cook. Let's cook. Let's cook. We need to get safety too. I I I know that's on the. I know that's on the docket. I have a I have a nice idea of what we're gonna do. Yeah, it almost does feel like it's a free pick where it's just kind of like you can do whatever you want. And folks, I might do whatever I want. Ah, where's where's my guy? Oh, he went 80th. Darn it. McMillan went super high then. Wow, Walker went 68th? McMillan went 62nd. This is insane. All right, yeah, we got to do it. Why is Carson from Wake Forest falling down boards? I don't know. It's a good question. We got D-line, linebacker, O-line. Uh, Cam Hart's interesting. Oh, man. Need corner and safety. We do. I think we make one of those picks corner and safety. And I think we have some fun after that. <laughs> Let's have fun first. Let's take Corley. <laughs> Let's take Corley first. This is a very silly idea. Um, it's fine, though. We'll take Corley for fun. What else can we do? Back to back Florida State wouldn't be bad. That's true. Corner and safety is is where we're looking. I know it's early, but like, do we take the uh, do we take our guy, uh, our coach's guy here? Or we did it. We did the thing. We did the thing. Um, I I like it. If DJ James was big enough, I'd be in. I'd be in 100%. I just don't. He's just not super big. <sighs> Cam Hart, a little inconsistent week to week. Cody says, hear me out. AJ Dillon, middle linebacker. I'm not mad at it. Chad Inks in on Malachi Corley. That's what I like to hear. Uh, do we want to do safety? The only reason I'm looking around is because I, I got to have an idea of our next two picks because we have to wait a little bit longer. Mm, I want I want I I want Dominic Pooney, so we're gonna take him. We're gonna get two offensive linemen here early. Um I know it's not always the move. I know other people are not always thrilled with this, but like to me at this point, like the to, to the tackles, I know Patrick Paul Pooney is somebody I keep taking in this spot just because this is exactly the type of player we need. Flex, positionally flexible. Tackle and guard. Can do both things. I, I, I just like the multiple lineman idea. We're not going to get Elijah Jones here. That stinks. Um, But, but, yeah. This is what I'm taught. Pooney just, this is like the most, like, I, what I'm locked in and like, other than like Melton, Pooney's like, this is a just their type of guy. It really is. It really is. It really, really is. I'm glad you like that one. I it just I can't find myself doing anything else with one of those. One of those third round picks for me always has to be him. It always has to be. We do need multiple linemen. Yeah. Would have loved Elijah Jones in the fourth. He played linebacker in high school. I'm not mad at it. Bishop or running back? Do we feel like we want to go Bishop? I'll lean on y'all. What do you guys want to do? 
See, Oladapo, this is silly stuff, man. He's 259th and like probably not going to get him this late. So we were all drafting Zach Tom to Green Bay in mock drafts and it happened. Maybe, maybe Pooney in the in the third is is gonna happen. Yeah, it could be the same. It could be. Um, okay. Safety or running back. The only reason I'm putting running back in the back burner a little bit is because because you know Corley might be a little bit of a running back, you know. <laughs> so like if we got Corley doing some running back stuff, who's not thrilled with that? Let's go get Bishop. I say we get a safety who can play unless we want. What about Mustafa though, guys? I like Mustafa better. I feel like I like Mustafa a little better. Bishop and a drop. Everybody seems to be in on Bishop. Running back is cheeks. I mean, it is. It is pretty cheeks. At corner, there's nobody we like. Oh, goodness sakes. <laughs> um, Goodness sakes. Kamal Haddon, man coverage, coverage grade. Not a good run defender. Don't love that. Carson's pretty solid across the board. Did pretty well. Oh, we could look. I'll look at edge. Let me check edge. Let's check edge. Only reason I say no to the top guy, Thomas, is because he's a lot smaller. He's like 240 something. Eboigby could be interesting. He's still like 290. Kamara's a little smaller. Problem is we don't have a lot of guys who still fit the mold here. Maybe the Michigan guys. Maybe Grayson Murphy. You know what? I know I know there's a lot of people clamoring for... Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm kind of excited about that. Um... Nah, let's let's go get let's you know what this is shout out to peter stone who has who has always been in here i know he might not be in here tonight i don't know he just maybe hasn't commented but peter stone keeps keeps hampered on like let's go get mustafa and like you know what throwback strong safety on the bottom line here you know what no you're right i i Oh, coach. Yeah, I know. Right? I know. Oh, everybody saw me go like, okay, everybody everybody saw who I was ooing at. Yeah, okay. I get you. Yeah, I understand this <laughs> very much. Oh, my guy just does everything. Darn it. He just does everything super well. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm going to shout out my guy, Peter Stone. I'll Ben Sinnott is my guy. Everybody, everybody who's been here long enough knows. Let's go Mustafa for fun. I, I think I, I love this idea of this throwback strong safety type. I I really like that idea. I really like that. I really like it. Uh, I keep guys, I keep changing my mind. Keep changing my mind. He did look good at the senior bowl. Senate did really nice. Um, let's go Bo. Let's let's change up. We're gonna go Bo Braid. I know Senate's super good. We're gonna go Bo Braid. I think he offers a little bit more. I know his grades aren't as good as uh Mustafa's, but I, I think he offers a little bit more uh in the strong safety role. Potentially positionally flexible. We didn't get the corner I wanted at 168 or 169, and Sundell goes before this. Goodness, we are it is a struggle out here. Shoot. Guys, corner's thinning out. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, might just have to take Kamal Hatton at this point. There's enough value here. All right, I'm going to take him. Where's Miles Cole? Uh, he's way down. Like, way, way down. He is 288. So, goodness. Uh, yeah, Coach, I like Sundell too a lot. I'm so bad he's not here at 169. That's annoying. Um, four edge guys who fit the, the mold threat. It's thin. Which is why I'm like, if they don't take, Adam, if they don't take defensive tackle early, like if I passed on Newton, I would be been even further in on like Neyland at 58. I'm with you on the Brooks Benson and the rest are not too exciting. 
I don't know. Did Dylan play under Halfley? Did he leave right when? He might have left right before, yeah. Overliable Cedric Gray? I don't think so. Like linebacker got a little thin. This is a strange mock. We kind of got out of our we kind of got out of our swords here. We got played by the board. No, there's some still there's still some linebackers. I want to take Tracy here, but like the Malachi Corley pick has me like thinking. Let's just grab let's just grab Haddon here from Tennessee, SEC corner with some man coverage experience, and like just take the swing there. I'm fine taking that swing because I do think there's still going to be like O line stuff here. We could go a third O line. Like, sorry, Tanner Bortolini's here. We're picking him. <laughs> be picking him at two o two. That's that's a no brainer. 3-0 line, as per usual. I, Joe Milton shouts interesting. Yeah. Um, Joe Milton would be... Joe, that, that arm strength he has is nuts. He is nuts. Uh, Ulafosio or Ford late. Good news, Brock. Ford is right here, and we're going to take him. We're going to take Ford right here at 219. I, I should have taken Milton there for fun. Shouldn't I? Yeah, I should have done it. Do a mock one time, says WM, where you trade back from 25 for two seconds. Yeah, we'll do a trade back. We'll do another mock frenzy here on a stream at some point. That's fair. I Question Ivy League. He says, I'm a hypocrite. Question Ivy League, but no problem with NDSU and SDSU. I mean, I think both of those schools, North Dakota and South Dakota State, both states, they could play at the FBS level. I don't think they'd be great, right? Like, they're not contending with some... But, like... I feel like they can contend with like the bottom half of the Big Ten, out west with the Big Twelve pack, t- Big Twelve especially like Mountain West. Like you telling me those two couldn't be in the Mountain West? They could be in the Mountain West, right? Linebacker is becoming a more premium position. Yeah, I mean, I think San Francisco and Baltimore have showed you how important it is. Let's take Jalen Ford here as we're talking about linebacker. Oh, uh, we got two picks left. Uh, trying to think what we haven't really addressed. Dang it. Bookie Watson goes right there. We add a lot of coverage players. Uh, All right, Chad, I'm going to ask you guys. They have been churning out guys. Um, Oh, yeah, that's true. Good point. They could probably, they could run the Mac. They could definitely run the Mac. Um, All right, here's, here's my question. Should we go running back, linebacker, or should we go linebacker safety to finish? You're right. We should take him, but I think we can give him a 255. Brock, so I think we're, what do we what do we like? What do we like between running back? Do we need a running back? Should we get one? We can get one. My guy Rashina Lee's a good player. We got two linebackers. Think that's enough. It's just a question if we want a third linebacker. Let's let's grab a running back just because we haven't. Come on. Let him fall to me. Yes, perfect. Oladapo for the win. Okay, there we go. A little mock draft for you guys to finish uh, out the evening. Almost a two-hour stream still. Um, I'm going to download that so we have it for sure. But here's the rundown really quick. Uh, Johnny Newton at 25. Peyton Wilson at 41. Christian Haynes at 58. Malachi Corley at 88. Dominic Pooney at 91, Bo Braid 126, Kamal Haddon 169, Tanner Bortolini at 202, Jalen Ford at 219, Rashina Lee at 245, Keaton Oladapo, my guy, my favorite seventh round pick to take every time. Um, that's the mock. That'll that'll play. That'll play. Ryan Watts in the seventh round. Good RES. That's a possibility. Yeah, that's a possibility for sure. WM, I think we might have found our Pacheco or Keaton Mitchell and Rashina Lee. I, I do think we have. He's coming off injury from the senior boat week, but I, I really like how he plays. I really do. He's 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 got like easy gliding speed out there. So there we go. There's our mock. There's the evening. I'm gonna get out of here pretty quick here. <laughs> We're reaching two hour mark, but uh this is awesome. What what an evening. You guys showed up big tonight. You really did. I am. I'm. I'm it was. It was awesome having y'all here. We just chatted for the first like hour fifteen before we did anything else. 
I came in. I was we were going to do all those pretty penny bargain buy stuff, and it took us an hour and fifteen to get there. You guys are awesome, and that's that's a testament to the chat being the best that it can possibly be. So, um. Cody asked, do you see Wilson playing Will and moving Quay to Mike? No, I think we go with what Coach said earlier um, about, I should have highlighted his message way up, about playing Peyton Wilson at Mike and moving Quay to Will. I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Um, so that that's my guess. Uh, and then we get, our, we get ourselves a Badger, Doug. Yeah, we're going to get ourselves a Badger who uh, can play mean. Uh, but Haynes, Pooney, and, and Bordelini would be fun. I know Haynes isn't quite the Packer type of having no experience at tackle, but I just I do something other than Abagaji at 58. Keep doing it. So, but thank you guys so much. I'm gonna super chats. Joseph hit us with that super chat earlier, uh, early in the stream, which was awesome. Larry dropped 20 bucks. Awesome stuff. I, I honestly can't believe that. That was incredible. Uh, SDM 40 drop at 20 was awesome. Uh, Clayton dropped up five. And then, of course, Chris trying to get us to do that mock draft, uh, which we always do. We're always going to do uh, on these streams leading up to draft time. So thank you five a bunch um, for all of those. But thank you so much to the chat tonight. Like all the regulars, I I, I want to shout out everybody. But my goodness sakes, you guys were you guys uh, crushed it tonight. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I appreciate every one of you. I really, really do. Uh, that you guys show up for this. Um, I know a lot of you show up for Clayton stuff. I'm going to say, like I mentioned before, Patreon, I'm going to start that up tomorrow. Might have, you know, something up tomorrow on, on Patreon. Uh, if not, for sure on Monday. Um, video tomorrow on uh, on an offensive lineman. May or may not be an offensive lineman we picked tonight, just saying. Um, and a lot coming on the channel soon. There will be a live stream for the draft. Um, I know a lot of you guys are in Clayton's stream and he's talked about his his stream, which is awesome. And you guys should definitely watch that. I know I'm going to be watching it after the draft um, while I get all the content sorted for for, for Friday uh, for day two of the draft. But I'll be here. Um, I think Nate should be with me. If uh, not, he's going to be at the very least like running the ones and twos and trying to keep me on schedule. We're going to have graphics. We're going to break down the prospects a lot. Uh, we're going to tip picks. We're doing all that stuff. Um, it's a blast. I love it every year. Um, so, yeah, if you want to stop by for that, awesome. I know there's a lot of draft streams going out there. Proud to say that Nate and I, um, if you've been here long enough, you know who Nate is. But if not, like go to past live streams when we did the draft. We've been doing it on, we've been doing it since uh, 2017. So it's been a long time. But thank you guys so much. Uh, for all the support, Joseph, one last question. Can Haynes play center? He got center reps of the senior bowl. I think they see him as a versatile versatile player uh, on the offensive line. So, yeah, but thank you guys so much. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, should be some more live streams uh, the rest of the way, not just on Fridays, but we'll have the, the Friday show. Might do a Friday show pre-draft uh, on before day two begins, so be on the lookout for that too. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff coming uh, on the channel, so appreciate all the support i'm gonna get out of here enjoy your weekend enjoy your easter uh for those celebrating and also enjoy you know the, the ncaa tournament if you're uh, if you're uh, particip uh, participating watching that so um thank you guys so much uh i will see you hopefully in the comments of videos and in streams to come enjoy your